This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. I wanted to talk about the French Revolution. I wanted to discuss some of the facts about it which I found most interesting, and also which are relevant to the Catholic Church and the Catholic aspects of the French Revolution. Did you know that during the French Revolution, which took place from 1789 to approximately 1799, Christianity was actually abolished in France? It occurred at one of the darkest periods of the French Revolution in 1793, from September to November of that year. The convention of the French Revolution abolished the Christian era, and the whole French Revolution was essentially a revolt against the Catholic monarchy in France, the Christian order in France, an overthrow of that order, and the King Louis the Sixteenth, who was reigning at that time, who claimed to be Catholic. And it was supposedly done in the name of liberty and the rights of man, and equality and fraternity. But as it progressed, it became even more and more evil, and in October of 1793, they abolished the Christian era. The festivals of the Christian year were no longer celebrated. Years were no longer dated from the incarnation of Christ. They devised a new dating system, and the week was even changed from seven days to ten. Sunday was also abolished, the day of the Lord, and the new era began with the beginning of the overthrow of the monarchy by the French Revolution, which occurred in 1792. And I just find it amazing that in the 18th century, not that long ago, in what was Catholic France, this actually occurred. It really speaks to the level of demonic activity behind the French Revolution and how quickly evil can sweep in and take over the masses and move large numbers of people. There were other incremental steps that were also taken to condemn the Catholic religion, outlaw it, there was also an oath imposed upon all Catholic priests. It was called the Oath of the Civil Constitution of the Clergy. That was one of the first steps that they took before the actual abolition of Christianity. And this was essentially a schismatic oath which denied the full jurisdiction of the papal office. And they imposed this upon the clergy so that, of course, they could root out all true Catholics and have sort of a puppet clergy of people who didn't really believe in anything but were subservient to the revolution. Religious orders, Catholic religious orders, were outlawed and pillaged. And then as things became even more and more violent, the priests who would not take this schismatic oath were not only removed, but they began to be arrested. And what's so pathetic and sickening when you read about this is how the so-called Catholic King Louis the Sixteenth of France actually signed the law which required this schismatic oath to be taken by the clergy. Louis the Sixteenth was a pathetic wimp and disgraceful heretic. It is said that he, on some level, may have repented of his, some of his actions during the French Revolution, but this is truly a disgusting example of cowardice and faithlessness in the face of evil. It was also displayed when the French Revolution was getting started. He and his wife had been imprisoned by the revolutionaries. The revolutionaries didn't yet decide to execute them because they were still feigning some kind of devotion to individual rights and having the right to a trial. So they said, well, we have to sort of examine him first before we execute him. It's interesting that later on, in the French Revolution, you see that people were executed without any trials whatsoever, including some of the most notorious revolutionaries. And so this evil revolution, which was supposedly done in the name of individual rights, devolved into a situation where people were being executed left and right without any trial whatsoever. And so it's ironic. But as King Louis the Sixteenth was imprisoned and being held by these revolutionaries, he and his wife, some of the Swiss Guard, foreign soldiers who were trying to fight off these revolutionaries for the king, were actually firing at these revolutionaries. And so they were fighting back, and they were having a little bit of success. And so the revolutionaries looked over to the king who was being imprisoned, or went to him, and said, tell them to stop. And immediately the pathetic coward King Louis the Sixteenth ordered them to stop fighting back. And some of these Swiss soldiers had already been killed fighting. 
and so essentially their effort was for nothing if they complied with this command to stop fighting but the commander of these swiss soldiers would not comply because he had more guts and honor and also he realized that this is a ridiculous decision and so he concluded that he could only stop fighting if he had a formal written order from the king a verbal order was not sufficient and so king louis the sixteenth pressured a little bit by the evil revolutionaries immediately complied gave the written order and they stopped and what happened all of the retreating swiss soldiers were massacred by the revolutionaries i found that to be a particularly sickening example of cowardice and it's not surprising considering that louis the sixteenth was a schismatic and when he gave in to the pressure and denied the catholic faith with regard to the civil constitution of the clergy and the oath it's not surprising that he would act in a similarly despicable fashion when pressured in other ways and also when he and his family tried to escape from the revolution they were caught maybe if he had more vigorously defended the catholic faith god would have allowed him to escape but uh two interesting books which really cover this topic one is the guillotine and the cross by warren h carroll and he covers the same subject in a very thorough and interesting fashion in his book the revolution against christendom volume five of a history of christendom some of the other things that occurred during the french revolution they incrementally abolished christianity they removed the link between the catholic church and france they outlawed the religious orders took their property they desecrated hosts they burned the bible and crucifixes the cathedral of notre dame was actually turned into a quote temple of reason and in the cathedral they actually had goddess worship and it was done with a living actress they had a ceremony where she played the goddess of reason and they worshipped her and so we see the demonic replacement of christianity with this satanic man-centered idolatrous order it's also interesting that the slogan of the french revolution was liberty equality fraternity john paul ii repeatedly praised that slogan of the french revolution which pope saint pius x said is incompatible with catholic truth obviously and it's also a symbol of one of the darkest attacks on christian society ever as the revolution progressed they started to kill anyone who not only worked to defend the previous monarchy but who didn't demonstrate the zeal they thought you should have for the revolution there was one incident where a revolutionary was passing by someone and asked her how to get somewhere to kill someone and since he did not receive an answer from her he was ready to kill her and what's so interesting is that one of the leaders of the most terrorizing days of the french revolution maximilian robespierre he was responsible for having many people put to death by the guillotine and eventually he wound up being killed by the guillotine the revolutionaries had him put to death and so it's ironic they reaped what they sowed and all of these people were being put to death because they did not support the revolution aggressively enough and it was done without any trial and so this revolution supposedly in the name of individual rights trampled upon everyone's rights and ended in complete anarchy it's also very interesting that during the french revolution they actually passed a decree where they could go house to house and search people for arms in other words for weapons sort of like a homeland security operation and they would use that to remove the weapons from anyone they deemed to be a threat to the revolution and also ferret out their enemies and find out what they were doing it's also very interesting that one of the most radical proponents of the french revolution was john paul marat he was a journalist who stirred up radical emotions and zeal for the french revolution by his writing and speaking and he was actually killed in his bathtub by a woman named charlotte corday and he became essentially the quote martyr of the french revolution and the wicked revolutionaries even 
began to venerate his heart. They had a procession for his decomposing body, and as Carroll points out on page 121 of The Guillotine and the Cross, in this huge procession for Marat, many were chanting, quote, O heart of Jesus, O sacred heart of Marat. And his heart was even cut out and suspended from the ceiling of one of their special clubs. And they would hold every meeting of this group under his heart. And so we see the replacement of the heart of Jesus with the heart of this demonic man. We see man in the place of God as representative of the darkest evil. Perhaps in a future part I'll talk about some other aspects of the French Revolution that are interesting.